something was going to happen. Something wonderful. Be too careful. Uh, oh, hang on, is this the uh, Young Doctors in Love uh, podcast? Oh, oh, it's geez. not, is it? Damn. There we go. Crikey, it, how it, sorry, wrong one. It's the same <laughs> podcast. You can't understand anything I'm saying, just like in Batman uh, in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, exactly right. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of uh, Talk Nerdy to Me. Yes, we're all stuck at home based on a curfew that just started just right now, in fact. So if we walk outside to the front door, we'd be pinged and uh, be fined accordingly. So, And, of course, you've got to wear masks whenever you go outside as well. So good day, Greg, and to Carol. Good to see people are joining us already on what is a miserable night in terms of the weather, in terms of the COVID-19 crisis and all the restrictions that are going on at the moment. So there's absolutely nothing positive going on except for us. And when I say us, I'm also referring to my co-hosts, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, lads? Good. Excellent. Most excellent, dude. Sorry, I'm doing my best, Bill and Ted. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can feel like I'm being grounded for nothing, but, you know, that, that was my childhood. All right, so we're going to move on. We're actually uh, tracking along quite nicely, if you don't mind, umpire. And we're going to talk about the year. What year? So let's get into some years. Yes, you're right, Michelle. Escape from LA was on last night. So, uh, yes, it is actually not the best movie in the world. Nowhere near as good as the original one. So there you go. MPS, over to you, son. All righty. So 1966, uh, for the most part from my research, was not a good or happy year. Uh, there was a lot of things happening. War was about to start. The Cold War was uh, was on. Things were crashing and falling out of skies and all sorts of, of bad things. But here are some of the things that were a little less uh, gloomy uh, and uh, within it, um, although one of them started on January 12. We'll get to those to that one later, which when colour came through with television, a few things came that were bright and wonderful and made the world a little bit more cheery so but in no particular order at this point in time the first sr-71 blackbird goes into service there you go yeah. plain one straight off the top hey i've got a card one for you so just relax i'll get to that in a second uh the first of 608 performance of sweet charity opens in the palace theater in new york city uh the unmanned soviet lunar 9 spacecraft makes its first controlled uh rocket assisted landing on the moon in Australia, the Australian dollar is introduced and at a rate of $2 per pound or 10 shillings per dollar. Mm. So if you can convert that, good for you. You're old enough. I can't, so I'm not going to. Uh, I, I remember I remember having to learn that at school, seriously, you know, sort of uh, decimal currency conversion. Wow. Yeah. And then after how many years did it not even matter? You just went straight to dollars and... You know, it was about 1970 when we sort of all finally sort of gave up the ghost and sort of got to um, the, the currency we know now. So it took about four years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Soviet space probe Venera uh, 3 crashes on Venus, becoming the first aircraft to land, maybe not so successfully, but land on another planet's surface. Um NASA spacecraft Gemini 8, uh, David Scott and Neil Armstrong, just someone you might know later on, conduct the <clears> first <throat> docking in space with a, a Gina target vehicle. Hang on. Stop for a second. This is a line we're putting in this because that's your all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I remember those good old days. Oh, what's a computer, darling? <laughs> um. Regular ho hovercraft services begin over the English Channel and then discontinued in 2000 due to the English uh, to, due to the tunnel. Uh, here's one for you, dude. Fiat signs a contract with the Soviet government to build a car factory in the Soviet Union. Mm, there you go. Interesting car stuff. Uh, here's here's one that I thought was very very interesting. While waiting at a bus stop, Ralph Bayer, probably never heard of the name, an inventor with Sanders Associates, 
writes a four-page document that lays out the basic principles for creating a video game to be played on a television, thus beginning the beginnings of a multi-billion dollar industry. <clears throat> so there you go. Ideas come at strange times. They do. Um, Scotland Yard arrests Buster Edwards, suspected of the invol involvement in the Great Train Robbery. The Toyota Corolla car is introduced. Hmm, there you go. There you go. Um, here's one which seems to be a bit of a running theme. Actors turning into government officials. Actor Ronald Reagan is elected governor of California. <laughs> the Beatles begin recording sessions for their Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band LP. Uh, slightly sadder news. Uh, Walt Disney dies in December uh, while producing The Jungle Book. And that's about all I have for the things that were actually good in 1966 that were documented. Uh, there are movies and TV series, and we'll get to those shortly. Very good. Over to Jeffro. Yeah, so in the uh, jolly old UK in uh, 1966, we saw the introduction of the Action Man toy figure. So uh, very much like their equivalent of G.I. Joe, but G.I. Joe was trademark. So let's go Action Man. Uh, Time magazine uses the phrase swinging London. So uh, that's very groovy, baby, that they did that. Um, the uh, This year is also the uh, the year that the Beatles uh, did their last performances. So uh, the last performance in the UK was um, at Wembley with the, the Stones and the Who. And later on towards the year, they did their last gig in, uh, in America. So... And then, of course, they were studio bound ever since. Uh, so, not counting the the rooftop concert because that's technically not a concert. Uh, Barclays Bank introduces the Barclay card, which is the first UK credit card. So, uh, very progressive. Uh, and born in this year, in no particular order or such, uh, we had Rick Astley, Alan Davies, Samantha Fox, Helen Bon Carter. Gordon Ramsay and Keith Sutherland, who I didn't know was actually uh, a Brit. So there you go. And film-wise, uh, some really good ones this time around, uh, a few TV-based ones. So we had Dalek Invasion Earth, 2150 AD, uh, Thunderbirds Are Go, uh, one that my wife hates, which is Modesty Blaze, uh, got a snicker out of her, uh, Fahrenheit 451, One Million Years BC, and uh, the Australian movie They're a Weird Mob. And music, uh, just one song of note. They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. Hee hee. Ha ha. To the funny farm by Napoleon the 14th. So there you go. Um, it was very funny. You mentioned about the Barclay card. Well, he obviously was so successful. He ended up Reg in Barclay uh, card. Enterprise. Yes, exactly right. Rich yeah. Yeah. Barclay. Uh, in terms of movies, uh, Jeff Rose correct. There were a lot of good films that came out. So many, in fact, that it's a bit hard to list them all. But there's a couple of them sort of picked out. Uh, Fantastic Voyage came out that year. Uh, where they get, you know, they shrink something down really, really tiny, inject it inside mm. of it. Such an interesting concept. Uh, and the key thing is that it featured uh, Raquel Welsh in the movie. And she was only uh, put into the film because she looked good. And that was, um, that's how you get, that was her casting character session, just because she looked pretty, stick on the film. And of course, you can market that accordingly. And uh, and they did. And uh, as a result, the thing was very successful. There was a movie came out called Zontar, The Thing from Venus. So, oh, um, yeah. Uh, which wasn't exactly a very popular movie. It was made for TV, and apparently one reviewer said uh, it was the cinematic equivalent of a car crash in that you couldn't... <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Now, just to show how some people's careers can tank or go down the tube after a huge bit of success, uh, you had the movie Cyborg 2089, which featured Michael Rennie. And, of course, Michael Rennie was in Day the Earth Stood Still, probably would have been a pinnacle of his career mm. in time of science fiction related films and of course he ended up into a cyborg 2087 which was complete rubbish but apparently the film had a very similar theme to terminator 2 in the fact that a cyborg is sent back in time to, uh, to the past which in this case is 1966 to change the future so how about that so uh, there's actually a very very a uh, lot of similarities there to uh, the terminator franchise which is kind of kind of groovy so there you go uh in japan of course they were very very busy smashing the crap out of just about everything as they do with godzilla versus the sea monster and uh, just to show that uh, europeans weren't out of the dark as well um war of the planets was a film made in italy 
Uh, so there you go. There's a whole lot of hand waving going on as they're, uh, as the planets are blowing the bejesus up out of um, themselves. So there you go. There's a whole lot of others. Jeff, I mixed, uh, mentioned the ones from England, which are obviously very, very popular and very successful. Uh, so that'll be it for me. So I'll go back to I assume MPS. And a couple of other movies that you missed out. Uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness was one of the horror films of that year. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly, which I think is all three of us on any particular day. <laughs> uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, uh, which is the first featurette to be released. And one that you missed out, dude, which I thought you would have picked up on, but I thought you might have been leaving it for me, Batman, which oh, came out after the series, which, again, I know, which uh, in terms of TV series, there was the Batman series. Uh, there was um, uh, Mission Impossible, started in 1966, The Time Tunnel, The Green Hornet, Star Trek. Uh, the Flintstones aired its season finale. The Frost Report uh, launched the television careers of John Cleese, Ronnie Barker, and Ronnie Corbett. The final episode of The Dick Van Dyke Show. I mentioned Star Trek. Uh, it's The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, premieres on the CBS network. Um... Television viewers get the first sight of a regeneration in Doctor Who. And Thunderbirds, Thunderbirds airs its final episode on ITV with a Christmas special. Uh, and a few other people that we know that became uh, created on that year. So they were born. Jermoen, Cindy Crawford, Billy Zane, Zack Snyder, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, John Cusack, Mike Tyson, Dean Kane. James Gunn, John Favreau, Michelle Gomez, and Dietrich Bader. 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 I can never get his name right. Um, uh, like Elf has mentioned that Lost in Space actually broadcast in colour. And, yeah, you're right, Elf. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on with colour at the time. That's the reason why Star Trek was so colourful, because colour TVs became the norm and the reason why uh, Batman was so popular, because they put in as many colours as you could possibly get just to make just to broadcast and advertise it all, which makes you wonder, had um, Star Trek, for example, stayed as a black and white show, uh, would they have gone all the colours in the first place or just kept it very generic like they have done for things like Discovery and whatever else? That's all very cool. Uh, William has said that he owns a copy of uh, a Blu-ray, Cyborg 2087. I can't help but think that if you got that Blu-ray and threw, frisbeed out the car window on the way home before the, uh, the what do you call it, the curfew's on, your, your actual collection would actually increase in value. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the Armani joke, and it's probably a fantastic movie. What can I say, eh? And uh, there you go, Ghost and Mr. Chicken. Okay, there you go. There's something different from uh, from Alex. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I do remember seeing that movie. Um, it's but I Don Knotts, I think. Don Knotts film. Gosh, okay, there yeah. you go. All right, so um, I think we'll uh, wrap this up on this cold uh, winter's night. Make sure you wear your masks and uh, stay inside because the curfew is still going for another seven hours at least. So there you go. Um, do, any final words from uh, my two lads? I'll say uh, goodnight, Deacon, because he's uh, leaving us, so he's contributed a bit on the uh, the comments. So, night, night. Very good. And I'll say that if you do happen to get uh, pulled over by the authorities, there's only two things that you need to say to them: I know nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, everybody, and make sure for myself, the important thing is on the night like tonight, got your masks on, look after the curfew, and, of course, you got to <gasps> stay nerdy. All right, take care, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, see you next week. Okay. See boy. you next week. <laughs>